everybody. Okay, good morning, everyone. We give thanks to God for the many ways that God provides for us. And on this eve of eve of Thanksgiving, um, our our hearts and our minds are often with our family. Um, what we are anxious for, what we're grief, grateful for. Um, so we wrap that all in today into our, our, our dwelling and beginning our morning in the word that, that gives us that grounding and that um, reminder that Christ is at the center and will see us through. So we gather this morning in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. I thank you, my heavenly Father, through Jesus Christ, your dear Son, that you have kept me this night from all harm and danger, and I pray that you would keep me this day also from sin and every evil, that all my doings in life may please you. For in your hands I commend myself, my body and soul, and all things. Let your holy angel be with me, that the evil foe may have no power over me. Amen. Satisfy us in the morning with your steadfast love, O God, that we may rejoice and be glad all our days. Praise to the blessed and holy Trinity, one God who gives us life, salvation, and resurrection. Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Alleluia. Give glory to God, our light and our life. O come, let us worship and praise. Be still and know that I am God. Let's see how quickly this goes. It's a little slow today. Um, here's our Mockingbird devotional. And today's is it's the 21st already. Um, so Alec Large is our um, writer. And 1 Timothy 1, 12 through 15 is our text. Though formerly I was a blasphemer, persecutor, and insolent opponent, but I received mercy because I had acted ignorantly in unbelief. And the grace of our Lord overflowed for me with the faith and love that are in Christ Jesus. The saying is trustworthy and deserving of full acceptance that Jesus Christ came into the world to save sinners, of whom I am foremost. Beginning, beginnings are, the mo are both important and telling for most relationships. If you're married, the way you began to fall in love says a lot about both you and your relationship with your spouse. The way he loved you, even when you finally became vulnerable and told them all about your past. The way she supported you when your career had fallen apart. While others judge and criticize your failures and imperfections, a loving relationship reminds us that we need grace and not law. We do not need to be told by others that we have messed up, lost favor, or fallen short. Instead, we need to be loved and supported there in the midst of our failures. The birth of a loving relationship is so amazing because it is not tethered to achievement. When we you, you are loved as you are, scars and emotions and all, you find that there is nothing more freeing. The Apostle Paul reminds this young apprentice, Timothy, of the beginning of his own relationship with Jesus. It had nothing to do with performance, prayer, or perseverance, or any of the other descriptions fitting a healthy relationship with God, for that matter. Paul didn't love Jesus or pray to Jesus. Instead, he was persecuting Jesus. In the light of God's eyes, Paul deserved judgment. Instead, Jesus met Paul on the road, and Paul received the overflow of mercy. Being a Christian is not based on performance standards, which is why Paul can tell Timothy that the gospel is the most important thing to remember. We do not become Christians, nor do we remain Christians, based upon what we do. Instead, we are told Christ Jesus came into this world to save sinners, of who I am the foremost. Amen. Well, coming into a week of, of Thanksgiving, a month of Thanksgiving, whatever, but Thanksgiving Day, to remember that Christ came into the world to save sinners, of which you are the foremost, of which I am the foremost. So just to that rem reminding, being reminded that. Um, of all of the, the history and the, the bones thick, 
whether they are turkey bones or bones between people around the table, either um, who currently are there, who are not there, who um, are absent for whatever reason, we think sometimes about um, all the ways it fell short, all the ways that either they didn't fulfill what we needed or wanted um, or desired where, where they fell short, or they remind us of the ways we've fallen short. Um, we can do that as family. We can ask the questions of, of our young people, those, those, um, those tropes almost of, so when are you going to get married? When are you going to have children? What are you going to do in college? Um, what are you going to major in? Um, when are you finally going to move out and make it on your own? All of these um, conditional statements that maybe are meant um, intended in love, but they're received in judgment. They're received as conditional. Um, I'm not successful because A, B, and C. Um, so these are the times perhaps to recognize um, first yourself and how you've fallen short. And then from that point of your own need, your own need of forgiveness, your need of grace to um, be present for those around us. And Christ first and foremost does that for us. Christ doesn't judge Paul for his failures um, in the sense of lording it over him forever. Christ takes Paul from those points of misunderstanding, of um, pain, of persecution, of hatred even, and brings him into a new life, a new creation. Um, frees him from the things that had divided him for so long from others, his neighbors, his God even, and doesn't make it a conditional, if you figured this out, or if you finally realize that you've been in error this whole time, then I will bless you. Instead, Christ changes hearts. Instead, Christ heals souls. Instead, Christ comes alongside and does the very thing that we need to do. We need most done for us. We can't do it ourselves. So it is a helpful thing when we have those both, both of those words, being told that we are sinners, but if we left it there, there's actually an article, I, I just read a podcast, of, um, and an article from, I think it was the New York Times, I can double check the reference, um, about how science has proven that there is no free will. <laughs> <laughs> which we as Christians, especially Lutherans, have known for a long time, that we do not, um, our will is bound to sin. Um, it, we have a master either. It is the the Lord of the, the darkness, it's either Satan or it's Christ. It's one or the other. We are bound. Um, we do not like hearing that. And there's the article, since it was in psychology, uh, teaching um, a study out of some psychologists, kind of talked about how by but when people realize that they don't have free will, they fall into despair, <laughs> um, especially without God. If you realize that I'm just bound to make these mistakes again and again, or I am bound to um, continually need to um, be reminded that I'm being selfish or that I'm not trusting, um, that there's nothing there that that despair ends up in apathy or in lack of wanting to do anything, the research says. And we too, in our in our theology, talk about not having free will of um, especially choosing God. Um, the things below, we can discuss. That's the place where we can have disagreements. But in that choosing God, I do not choose to be told I'm a sinner. I am simply told I'm not. I don't, and I don't choose a savior who um, will free me from that. I am chosen by that savior. That savior comes all the way to me and to you, and. That is the part that's missing in the research, God. Because in the face of despair of, you're a sinner. If I leave you there today, you're going to feel awful for Thanksgiving. But, but if I say, yes, you are a sinner, and Christ has forgiven you, and Christ has freed you, and Christ doesn't see your sin, but sees um, how much he loves you, and how um, much grace has been poured out upon you, um, that's a very different message. 
So today, as we remember that we are sinners first, and that other people around us are too, in humbleness, we then receive that second word of grace, that God's grace is sufficient for even all of your sins, all of the things that you are worried about this next week, all of the things that you are holding um, heavy in your heart. God knows it, and God carries them and carries you. Thanks be to God. Amen. Be still and know that I am God. You have been born anew through the living and abiding word of God. I'm just going to keep going. The Lord be with you and also with you. Mighty God of mercy, we thank you for the resurrection dawn, bringing the glory of our risen Lord who makes every day new. Especially we thank you for the sustaining goodness of your creation for sunsets and sunrises that come anew every day and at times are so glorious that we stop actually and we notice them and we are reminded that you gave this to us and you sustain this for us and we are amazed and we are humbled and we hope that others can hear and see that you are the gifter. You are the one to whom we are thankful that has given us every new dawn and will continue to provide for us in our every need. For the new creation in Christ and all gifts of healing and forgiveness, we pray. We pray for those in need of your care in the midst of crisis in the midst of uncertainty. We pray for the need for healing of bones and of hearts, the need for healing of, of kidneys and ovaries and, and our cancer diagnoses, for teeth, <laughs> for um, mental health, for addiction, all the ways that we need healing, Lord, we lift up to you. And we also give thanks today for all the ways you've healed, all the ways you've restored. So we ask at the same time that we recognize that you've already been fulfilling so many of our prayers. And we pray for the gift of relationship with others. In this time of Thanksgiving, we give thanks for the people gathered around our table. Um, and the people who are a phone call away from our table, um, that we will not be able to share that meal with this year. We lift up those who are now with you, that once cut the turkey or prepared the mashed potatoes, or who taught us how to cook, how to clean, how to um, be in family. We remember them today, and, and it's a it's hard, Lord, but it's also a recognition of your gifts. So remind us um, of your grace and your strength in these days and help us to come into our, our meals and our celebrations and our thanksgiving, remembering first that we are sinners and that you have forgiven us. And then looking at others out from that center point of ourselves which we that's definition of sinner and remind me be reminded that you continue to gift us with one another for the communion of faith in your church lord um, we rejoice and we ask that you continue to gather us in help us to um, connect to serve to be in fellowship we give thanks for bunco night we give thanks for um, tomorrow evening's thanksgiving eve service 
We give thanks for the ways that you are with and sustain us. Merciful God of might, renew this weary world, heal the hurts of all your children, and bring about your peace for all in Christ Jesus, the living Lord. Especially we pray for those who govern nations of the world. We pray for President Biden and Vice President Harris. We pray for um, all of our senators and Congress people, either federal or local or, or, or um, state. We pray and we hope that you're working in and through them, that divisions can be overcome by you, that you can provide for our future, Lord. And we lift up um, countries such as Ukraine and Russia, Israel and Palestine, Egypt and Jordan, China, and the needs that their um, leaders have to um, measure their actions to create peace rather than warfare um, to that you act in renewing this world even as we react sometimes in harming it and for people in countries ravaged by strife or warfare may this thanksgiving not be a time of i'm glad i'm not them i'm grateful that i don't I'm not suffering like other people. Um, rather than comparing, even though it's honest, Lord, help us to to see the gifts that you've given us. How what you've helped us through this year, how you have been in our heart and our minds, and then also we pray for those who are in need, who don't have an easy list of thankfulness, whether because of war or because of conflict um, in homes and in lives and even within themselves. So we ask and we, we give, as even while we give thanks, we give um, lift up our prayers for others. For the work of peace and international harmony, we continue to pray and lament how we fall short. And we ask that you bring your peace. For all who strive to save the earth from carelessness and destruction, we ask for renewal of our, our planet, sustainability, care for our future, and maybe not so much fear past tactics that sometimes shut our ears and our hearts, but hopefulness. Be good to have some hopefulness, Lord. For the Church of Jesus Christ in every land, we give thanks for our new members at Creator. We give thanks for um, though all those who gather each and every week. Um, and we ask that you continue to connect and gather us through the Holy Spirit to your word, to your grace. Um, and continue to sustain the ministry of Creator Lutheran Church, of being a place of um, word and sacrament, law and gospel, and God's, your grace pouring out. Almighty and everlasting God, you have brought us in safety to this new day. Preserve us with your mighty power that we may not fall into sin nor be overcome in adversity. And all we do, direct us to the fulfilling of your purpose through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. Almighty God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, bless and preserve us this day. Amen. Oh,